Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the game is right around the corner. It looks like a nightmare brought to life. And I really want to get into it, you guys, and talk to you why I think that Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the game, is going to be the evolution of this genre of asymmetrical horror gaming. And before I get into that discussion, you guys know that have been following my talks, you know how much I love games like Alien Isolation and games that really make you remember the alien for the reason that it brings anxiety, paranoia, and an atmosphere that really pushes what Alien felt like to be a movie and putting you in that experience and that is what I think that Gun Media and Sumo are doing with this game and as opposed to other games like Aliens Fireteam Elite where it's just a shooter and you play it and then you kind of forget it because it's not giving you the movie experience in a way that is memorable. It's just kind of a thing you play once and then you forget, much like the movies that we watch today. A lot of them, you'll watch them, but they don't resonate with you as memorable experiences. And I think that is super important, even in the video game world. Let's get into this. One of the first things is stealth. We all know that the game is supposed to be stealth themed, right? So. What did we all do when we went into Friday the 13th, right at the beginning of the beta, right? Uh, and we didn't understand the meta, we didn't understand Jason. A lot of us went into that game crouch walking and being very slow and calculative when we were going around the Crystal Lake maps. And then obviously, you know, once we figured out how Jason worked and we figured out what we could and couldn't do, we would get up and start running around more and being a little bit more crazier in our movements and in our strategies. But in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the way they have designed the game, it is almost required that you slow down and crouch walk and hide and sneak around the map at a slower pace. And that's perfect for a horror suspense type of game. It's no longer about running circles around the killer and all that silly stuff and because now there's three killers so if you try that you know another one's gonna come in and get you and you'll be running obviously when you get into a chase and you're seen and whatnot but the initial thing before you get into an interaction with the family is you don't want them to see you in the first place because of how dangerous they are and that speaks volumes for what this game is going for in the initial impression that I'm getting from it. I personally find that having played all these asymmetrical horror games over the years, the most exciting moments out of these games is when you have those close call moments, is when the killer's running after you and you turn a corner, even in DBD sometimes this happens, is you'll turn a corner and hide behind something really quick and the killer comes in, runs right past you, and then you get up and go back the other way, right? Or or even when you're sitting in a bush or something, right? Or you're sitting in a dark shadow and a killer is coming into the room and right, and now the player is has two things going in their head. Do they commit and stay in the hiding place or do they get up and run off, right? A lot of players, when I'm playing a killer, I'll be running around, right? And I'll run right up on them and I don't even see them because of the way they're sitting in a corner or against a wall or whatever. They're kind of camouflaged, right? And then at the last second, you know, I'm getting ready to walk right past them. And because they freak out, they get up and run away. And I'm like, holy shit, I didn't even see them. If they would have just stayed there, they would have been fine. And that happens a lot on the survivor side of things. I've seen that as well, where you'll be sitting down somewhere and a killer comes right up to your face. You guys have seen clips and shit of this stuff on my Twitch, where a killer will walk right up to my face and then turn around or they'll just do a 90 degree turn and keep going in another direction and you're like holy shit I can't believe that just happened and those those essentially are the horror movie magical moments that you want in these kinds of games and I feel like Texas Chainsaw Massacre is going to hone in on that and that is what excites me about the game 
Another thing that looks just absolutely amazing is the set pieces themselves, the hiding places, the way you're going to be moving around these maps. Looking at GameSpot's video, you can kind of see a lot of this going on, but it seems very grounded. The hiding places are very natural feeling, and that's the illusion, right, is to make players feel like they're not in a game, but they're in their own horror movie experiences. So with all the hiding places and the close quarters and the, you know, in the, it's natural now very pulled in, claustrophobic. You are in very close quarters typically with the family members until you get out of the basement, get out of the house, and until you're in the yard, you really are in close proximity. Very stressful, very paranoia, anxiety inducing, which is great. This is supposed to be a suspenseful game and from what you see in all these gameplay shots, it just gets me extremely excited to see that they're nailing the things that myself and others have just been wanting in these games all along. All the best parts from the games that we've played, you know, DBD, Hide or Die, Last Year the Nightmare, you can tell that they've done their homework and they're taking all the things that are fun about these games and putting it into Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And that, I think, listen to me carefully, that is what will distract people from the balance issues, right? A lot of the big frustrations and the complaints come from the balancing and the frustrations of losing and all that stuff. But if the game has an experience, right? If the game has an experience that is overpowering and upstaging the frustrations of losing and all these things that have frustrated us through the years of trying to play asymmetrical horror games, if the experience and the roller coaster ride is good, and this is these are things that I've been saying for years now, if the experience itself outweighs anything that you're seeing with the balance and you're having fun with the game, you're going to keep loading it back up. You're going to keep playing it. You're going to cherish the experiences that you get every time you hop into a round. And that is what is going to make these games succeed time and time again because people are over the competitive stuff right you know i see people play dbd and they only play it because it's the only thing they got right now that is giving them somewhat of the experience that they really want out of these games so that and that keeps them coming back because they're getting about 20 to 30 percent of the roller coaster ride that they want you know but Texas Chainsaw, I feel like, is moving it up to the next level, right? They're they're upping the experience part of it and giving people a haunted house to go through over and over again. It's like getting off of a... Have you guys ever been to a theme park and you get on a roller coaster ride and you're like, holy shit, that adrenaline rush was amazing. And you get off, you line back up and get on it again. And then you get off of it and you get on it again. Some of you have been to a theme park where you've done that and you've rode a ride probably 20 or 30 times in a row if the park happens to be slow and you don't have to wait in a queue line that long. That is what these games should be shooting for and I feel like with Texas Chainsaw Massacre with what we have just seen is doing that literally this is going to be even closer to the dream that everybody's looking for of being inside their own horror movie and that is the next level of horror games I still believe that's why I think these asymmetrical games are really the next step they're still in their infancy and I'm glad the uh, gun media is sort of taking the game out of infancy and bringing it into its teenage years, so to say. The, 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 the genre is growing up and I'm glad that there are developers out there that aren't just trying to mimic what other developers are doing and making another version of the same games that we've kind of been playing, but taking it and then changing it and evolving it right and i think that is very important with these games you know i'm super excited you guys about getting in the game getting that paranoia anxiety and and all this stuff is going to be amazing i think this is going to be a really 
great experience and a lot of the things that you guys have t heard me talk about in my previous videos you know the details of jumping down the well actually takes you from the upper level back down into the basement and you kind of have to restart your plan again of escape but you really needed to jump in the well at that moment because you were so close to death with leather face on your on your ass or the whole chainsaw revving turning it off for stealth and all that good stuff uh, I called it so it's really cool to see that when now that GameSpot and IGN are showing all this gameplay that I was kind of right on my previous talks about what is going to be going on in the game definitely go back and take a look at some of my previous talks on Texas Chainsaw Massacre here we have a picture of Julie being hung up in the basement I know that this is how the survivors will be starting off and then they free themselves from their restraints and then they get to go run around the map and try to escape. Then we have like a really nice sneak peek of what nighttime is gonna look like. Most of the preview stuff is daytime material. So I think they're saving a little bit of the nighttime stuff as a surprise for later on. But holy shit, if the game is creepy and, and suspenseful in the daytime, just imagine what it's gonna be like when everything is pitch black dark. Another thing is I think that people are taking the number change from the killers a little bit for granted, but you guys got to think about this. There is three killers on the map. No more will you be able to get on the microphone and be like, so-and-so's over here, you know, and then get a good perspective of where the killer's at and what you can get away with on the other side of the map because there's two other killers on the map to deal with. Or, you know, running around tables and kiting the killer and there's so many things you just can't do anymore to get away with things like we did in previous asymmetrical games which i think a lot of us have gotten used to when this texas chainsaw game comes out the fucking shit's gonna change a lot of the shit that we're used to is gonna go right out the window and this is gonna bring something new to the table and i think it's ultimately pushing this whole thing forward in a way that people don't understand yet until they get their hands on the game and that's why i think that this game is really taking it to the next level hear me out that this is going to be a really fun experience when it comes out next year i do hope there's a beta i really want to dig into this i know there's a lot of stuff on the screen the ui and some of the gameplay things i'm going to get into that into another video but i just wanted to hop on here and let you guys know my initial impressions with receiving all this news and how I feel about it. And you guys, please hit the thumbs up, share this with your friends, put it on your Discord, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be following Killer Clowns from Outer Space and Texas Chainsaw Massacre very closely because I feel that these two games specifically are going to take things up a notch. And I am super excited for all of it. I will see you guys in the next video. Halloween's coming up and I wish the best for everyone. I'll see you later.